right? <laughs> Um, we decided to focus our digital project on um, on social media, and I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> That's a good start. Um, specifically, Twitter. Um, this was something that had been researched in Gloucestershire for actually a couple of years, um, but nobody had ever actually jumped in and done it. So we've got lots of old reports on it, but nobody had actually just thought that they would try it. Now. Um, the staff in, in Gloucestershire who were involved were um, Twitter lurkers at best, I think is the phrase that we used. Um, but we knew it was growing in popularity and we knew that the publishers would be, would be using this so that they would be able to support us. Um, social media would allow us to reach online reading communities um, and make them aware of everything that the library service has to offer, uh, particularly promotion of events, activities and our existing electronic resources. I was on the wrong slide. Oh, you're on the wrong slide. <laughs> um, oh yes, okay. Yeah, so I mean, just just to add to that, as, as publishers, yeah, Twitter seemed like the most obvious choice to us as well. We use it really regularly in uh, in our day to day activities. We felt we could add quite a lot to to what the libraries were doing. Um, it's technically easy to get going, um, and I think that's our starting point. So we decided that we would create a Twitter book club. So we were going to focus on two titles a month for three months. And the aim was to get people to join in, um, to claim a free copy of the book, and actually join in conversation on Twitter about the books and reading in general. Um, all but one of the books were by debut authors. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, this had the benefit of building an audience for these new authors um, and allowing readers to discover something new. So our online presence was born, and we called it Rediscover. <laughs> uh, I think one of the publishers came up with that, but Just we liked we it, that. so it stuck. <laughs> um, so the publishers agreed to provide the free books, um, obviously their Twitter expertise, uh, author involvement, and help with our promotional materials for the project. Uh, we agreed to set up the, li the library Twitter account uh, by lending copies of the books as well, promote them and promote the project whilst we were tweeting every day. Uh, we also decided that we would hold a celebration event at the end of the project so that we could bring together the virtual wor world in and the physical world of the library. And from a publisher's point of view, what we felt, I mean, um, Plumesbury, Grant and, and Profile, independent publishers, and, and what I felt specifically set it apart was that it was an opportunity for us to get involved. And, and with the reading agency, there's not always having the funds as an independent publisher to to get involved and we don't have the names or specifically granted don't have the names to generate large audiences on their own and we saw this as an opportunity to focus our attentions on specific authors and have a county-wide campaign where we could really reach out to them um, so and we could expose our fairly literary list to, to a new audience so that was our starting point one of the key things that we knew we would have to do was some really good promotion to get the project going um, we initially talked about trying to target um, parents of young children and elderly housebound people who attend monthly library clubs in some of our libraries. Um, after a bit of research, we found that these library club gr groups just, they weren't interested in Twitter. Most of them hadn't heard of it, let alone were willing to actually get, get online and try it out. So instead, we focused on parents of young children by visiting uh, baby bounce and toddler time sessions in our libraries, and we emailed loads of reading groups to try and get some of them involved. Uh, publishers kindly dealt with the design and printing of some leaflets, which we took out to the groups and sent to all of the libraries. They also designed uh, a really great eye-catching poster for our final event. Um, and throughout the project, our council's press team actually um, released several, several press releases. So we ended up having a good few articles in local newspapers, and I think three of us did, did interviews on local radio as well. We also had news articles on the county council website, and there's just a few examples here of articles. That was in one of our local newspapers. And you can see here, there's a really nice banner that was created by the, by the web team at Gloucestershire County Council. So one of the, the key, I think the teamwork was really key in our, in our project and how we managed to get to our final event. Um, other than these events that the reading agency organized, we met together in Gloucestershire once where the publishers came over and met with us in Simon Sester Library. Um, and we decided to hold regular conference calls, which You're which bi really weekly, weren't they? Yes, yeah, to start with, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, and then we emailed 
quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we've all got folders of emails, I think, that we'll yeah. be disposing of once we've finished. And, and as publishers, <laughs> I think we found the working relationship to be one of the most rewarding things about the project. I think, I can certainly speak as granted, I've got a much better idea of the possibilities presented by libraries from the regular conference calls, um, the hurdles that you guys have to overcome, um, but also what can be achieved. Um, we had a pretty good communication as a group, and I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll yeah. stay in touch um, after that. And the conference calls were a really great way to check in regularly. We always had an agenda, and we came away with a really specific to-do list, which I think drove the project forward pretty, pretty well. So during the, the three months where we were giving away our free books, we held two twin interviews with our authors, uh, with Paul Watson and Amy Sackville. Uh, we spent an hour online with the authors, and we advertised them on Twitter, and um, we had library staff and publishers on hand to keep the conversation moving. Um, I think I'm right in saying these were new to all of us. Um, and it was interesting. Uh, it was quite difficult to keep track of it in that environment, in the Twitter environment. But... Um, uh, we didn't have as much interest for our second one, but generally, I mean, we were happy with the way it went. It was really... Well, it's interesting you say you didn't have as much interest for the second one because the second one was one of my authors, Amy Sackville, who was a complete novice at Twitter and some might say a bit of a sceptic and cynic. And in fact, off the back of that, she set off her own Twitter account because she really enjoyed it. She loved the fact that she was engaging with people without having to leave her living room. <laughs> <laughs> And then in December came our Meet the Author event. Um, it's the first time in several years that Gloucestershire have had an event where they've had so many authors involved. Um, and it is the first time we had ever used Skype for an event. Um, we advertised this in um, all of our libraries, on Twitter and in the local media. Um, and we also have a monthly column in one of our local newspapers where we get to put a little news story in. So we use that for this as well. Um, and we had three authors who came and they, they read from their novels and they answered questions. And then we had a fantastic session with um, Attica Locke who linked with us uh, via Skype. And she was in California, I think. So um, we, I think we were, <laughs> we had a little doubt as to whether it was, it was going to work, but it was, it was fantastic. And other than a little problem with the sound here and there, it was, it was a success, it was fantastic. Um, they were all really great speakers, and I think that everybody who attended really enjoyed themselves. Um, most of the people who offered feedback to us, actually, it turned out they hadn't been involved with the Twitter section of the project at all. Uh, most of them weren't on Twitter, but we think that we convinced at least a few of them to go away and try it out. Yeah, I mean, the Skype thing was actually one of the most successful components. In fact, uh, shamefully, as a publicist, I'd never actually been to an event which had a Skype interview, and I think that was one of the most exciting parts of the project. It was a really small audience, but it was really friendly, and in, in publishing terms, I think that's how we always tell it to, uh, to our authors, that uh, a small audience can be a really rewarding one, because everyone was really engaged, yeah. loads of questions, there, there was dialogue that just kept on going, kept on going. I'm not sure how much that was fueled by the wine, but uh, it, definitely, <laughs> it was definitely a really warm atmosphere despite yeah. the terrible weather. Yeah. Uh, this was the poster that we produced for the event. And we've got some lovely photos. <laughs> and this was That's Attica Skype. on Skype. There were some challenges. Um, <laughs> we spent a lot of staff time on this project. Um, processing the actual giving away of the books was probably the most complicated part for us. Um, it was quite difficult trying to communicate with people on Twitter, trying to get all of their details in 140 characters. We, we, we actually ended up with, I think it was three direct messages that we sent to everybody who wanted to claim a free book. So that was a little bit more work than I think we had imagined it would be. Um, in terms of training, uh, we had a very small and enthusiastic team um, in Gloucestershire, uh, but none of us were very experienced at all, so it was a really big learning curve for all of us. Um, the event, as we said, it went really well. Um, the turnout was low, but it was cold and it was wet and we thought it was going to snow. Um, and up until the day of the event, I think we weren't convinced that well, it was going to be able to happen. I mean, it was yeah. all knees and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then one of the main issues was ICT, and I think a lot of you probably have similar issues, um, where to be able to get access to Twitter on our work PCs, we had to create a business case, and we had to do that for every single individual who we wanted to get involved, and we had to have a corporate training session uh, before we were allowed to, to tweet. 
So we, we did this and we got everybody through. Um, and then it, we came to Skype for the event and um, we needed to get the software onto a, onto a laptop. But unfortunately, we weren't able to do that in time. So we ended up using our own equipment. Um, so I think in future, the idea will be that we will have a laptop that we will try and dedicate to any extra software, anything like this that we might want to use so that we've got something that we can transport around the county and maybe use with staff if we want to do any training. And then we know that we only need licenses for one piece of, <laughs> piece of equipment. Yeah, I mean, as publishers, we were really, really impressed by the enthusiasm and passion you guys had up, up against specific, quite bureaucratic challenges. I mean, hats off to you guys because they really drove this forward. There was so much publicity, especially in the week before. I think all of you have been on the radio station at least once, haven't you, to plug this in. <laughs> it was really impressive. Uh, before we started this project, um, Gloucestershire County Council had a Twitter page and our Ask Us Inquiry service had a Facebook page. Um, but none of us had actually dealt with any of these things. But we have now, as you can see, started using all of these, um, some more than others, but um, we really have moved forward, and, and I think that's really great. <coughs> and here's just some statistics of things that we did throughout the project. The book loans were the loans from the, the six titles that we, that we bought for, for lending which was in addition to the ones that the publishers provided. So what we learned, um, we learned how to use social media to enhance our service. Um, the feedback that we got showed us that actually Facebook seemed to be more popular than Twitter. Um, but I think that things are changing a lot and Twitter is more immediate. And that is what, what we really played on, I think it was having those conversations, being able to get the messages out in a short, sharp way. But we have actually now linked our Twitter account to our Facebook account. So everything that we do on Twitter is also on Facebook for anybody who prefers that, that method of communication. Yeah, and, and as publishers, I guess we kind of knew this, but um, it's really proved that de December events are really tricky. The weather's bad, people prefer to shop, and we were thinking, cozy, wine, come and hang out and read books. <laughs> Didn't quite work, but I think part of that was circumstantial. But, um, and Twitter's a, a constant upkeep game. It takes time management, and you need to create a conversation by asking questions, posting interesting content, and that's something we all got involved with, but it, it does take quite a lot of time when you're running around doing other things for publishers, especially in their most busy part of the year. Um, authors love Twitter, as I said, Amy Sackville set up her own Twitter account off the back of it. They like the fact they don't have to leave their house. Um, and we definitely try Skype link ups with libraries again. I'd always heard about them from the meetings we had um, with, with Sandy and I always wanted to do one. I never quite had the opportunity and so I was so pleased to see one in action. It was really successful despite, despite the, the, the glitches that we had. But was Twitter the right way to go? I think we would all agree that perhaps, especially for the Gloucestershire demographic, Facebook was probably a little bit better um, for that. But, but overall, I think it was, it was successful. Yeah. So we intend to carry on with um, all, of the, all of the experience that we've gathered. We have, to, we have to start training other staff so that there's more people who are involved. Uh, a small team trying to keep these, these things going it was very difficult and we had the time that we were dedicating to it for this project but we now need to to get more members of staff and those out in the front line as well joining in with this um, we've got some author events coming up in the spring that are very similar sort of format to the ones that we've we've done recently so we want to carry on doing things like that and obviously we hope to maintain our relationship with the Absolutely. publishers um, and continue to promote new authors uh, via social media and carry on with things like author talks. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> and here were just some last thoughts that we had from the publishers and the libraries to sum up. 